Um, so let's talk a little bit about teaching. And in part, before we kind of start the interview, you mentioned that you, you envisioned this as kind of a, a book that students could read, that you could assign in class. Um, but beyond that, obviously, most of us don't have the ability to go to play the places that you mentioned. Um, what, what kind of, how would you, if we, if we couldn't assign your book to class, mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of methodologies, what kind of ways would you envision, could we, could we bring the material from your book into the classroom? Well, uh, I believe so. I believe that uh, I, my idea with the book, then I think that the different, then the concepts that are developed in each chapter could be useful to study other cases. Then on the one hand, to teach using the book, it would be possible, for example, to visit virtually the International Slavery Museum, uh, to see objects that we have in the National Museum of African American History and Culture, to see images of the monuments that you talk about, for example, um, then, uh, then Monticello is possible to visit virtually Mount Vernon as well. And let's say the, the Colston, who is no longer there. Uh, we, unfortunately, Colston is no longer there, but we have so many pictures of uh, the, that monument and video as well now. Mm -hmm. um, then at the various stages of his death and resurrection, then these could be materials that could be used. But um, now, the alternative way is to go to, to, to take the city where you are uh, that certainly has a monument or a site or an exhibition or a plaque that is associated with the history of the slavery and the Atlantic slave trade mm -hmm. and use these devices as a, a, a taking into account perhaps uh, the, the issue of collective memory, public memory, cultural memory, mm -hmm. uh, public history, and using one of these examples as a way of uh, treating the, the problem. Then I, I am thinking about, I am teaching a graduate seminar, it's not another graduate seminar, but I am teaching a graduate seminar that I have been teaching for, for a while. Now it's some more than two years that I don't teach it. And I am asking myself how I will proceed this time. And I think that is an interesting way to send the students to the, to the field, uh, mm -hmm. to choose one of these, um, these markers that are there, or even a site where there is nothing. Mm -hmm. Because for example, in Brazil, when I was then not in this book, but in Brazil, there are many sites associated with uh, slavery and the Atlantic slave trade, and there is ab absolutely nothing there. Mm -hmm. then what, how can we, we work uh, those places right. where there is nothing that is not about memory that is it's about uh, forgetting then mm -hmm. i think that this could be a way i would say of teaching uh, using the the book because in all those the places where at the end we have a memory that emerges at some point there was nothing there Mm -hmm. And we needed a monument to, to be constructed. We need people to organize themselves. And we see on an almost weekly basis, then even the students, is, uh, then the, the high school students and so on, who are at, helping, for example, to preserve cemeteries, to uh, organize initiatives, to have plaques uh, indicating where cemeteries of African-Americans or enslaved people were, then, uh, when we have this markers is the result of the work uh, of uh, all this work uh, summed together that uh, brings this to to light right 